Hi there, my name is Vince from MyMateVince.com and in this video today I'm going to try and fix this Xbox One X. So this was sent in to me by a viewer called Myron. Could be Miron, I think it's Myron, when I've googled it it's coming up with two different things. But to me Myron sounds more natural off the tongue. So uh, he tried to change the little HDMI chip and unfortunately it went wrong and he lost a couple of, blew off a couple of components around it as well, which is easily done. The second time I tried to change a chip, because I think the first chip I took off was on an Xbox One, and then the second chip I took off was on a Nintendo Switch, like the charging chip, and in doing that I must have knocked off about six or seven capacitors around it. It happens because the chips we're talking about are only this big and they have capacitors and stuff like this far away so it's really easy when you're using hot air to knock off a few of the others or the tweezers will knock off. The only thing that stops that from happening is experience so fair play for giving it a go because not everybody has the balls to give something a go and you don't know if it's going to be successful or not until you try and most times a lot of times it won't be successful but if you keep at it eventually it will be successful but he contacted me and he asked me did I want to take a look at it he said basically I could have it for free all I had to pay was the postage uh, I gave him a bit more than just the postage because it's an Xbox One X but uh, he knew full well he could get two or three times the amount on eBay but he still chose to send it to me because he wanted to see it on a video which is good so it's arrived I've just opened it up just to see if it is what I thought it was but I haven't actually gone any further than that I do like the fact that wallpaper has been used as the outer covering I think that's nice so uh, when I looked in here, I think the hard drive was separate. Right, so that's the hard drive there. So here we have it. Now, whether you're a PlayStation guy or an Xbox guy, you've still got to agree that the Xbox One X is lovely. Whether you like the games or not, the Xbox One X itself is just uh, is just nice and to get that much power in something the same size as the Xbox One S is, uh, is a nice little feat of engineering. So let's take this apart, let's pop this hard drive back in it and let's see exactly what's happening on the inside. So I think let's get the hard drive back in it and then connect it up to a TV and see what it's doing. So I'm using a T10 security bit at the back here, a Torx bit. Normally there's a little sticker over this bit here covering that screw. Now I've never taken one of these apart before, so this is all a little bit all a little bit new to me. Now is there more screws to come out of it? Oh, this comes off here. Okay. I'm going to do this gently because it's going to be a ribbon cable at the front here for this button or something, maybe. Hmm. No, okay, nothing there. A little bit of dust. So, I can hear something rattling about on the inside. Let's take off... Can I take this off? Or is it, oh, a little ribbon cable there. Let's undo that ribbon cable, get rid of this front one here. And then... Okay, that just flips up there. Uh, take that out and then hopefully I'll be able to start getting this metal bit out of the, the bottom bit here. So a T9 fits that one. There we go, so that's out there. So now I think I'm going to just start undoing all these ones at the top here. I 
don't believe it, I've just ripped off all the pads from there. That connector there, is that was that not designed to come off like that? Look, can you see it's like one of those Lego connectors. It came off very, very easily though. Look, why didn't that come off? Why? How else are you supposed to get that off? All I did was undo the screws and pull it. Right. Well, that's not going to be. That's not going to be repairable because all the. Oh, yeah. Look at all the pads there. I think all those pads have been ripped. I'd have to look at that closely later. Oh well, that's not a good start whatsoever. So I need to find out what that's for. I'm hoping it's just going to be some sort of Bluetooth thing. Uh, or a Wi-Fi thing would be even better because this it could still be used then with an Ethernet cable. Oh well that's not a good start whatsoever. It came off very, very, very easy. Very easy. Right, I think all these look like T10s. Well, it looks like the thing rattling around in here was just a screw. The connector for there. Right, okay. Such a shame it wasn't this side of the connector that broke, because if it was this side, it would be repairable. But this is actually on the on the motherboard. There we have it. Right, so they're not like the thermal pads, you know, they're not like the sticker ones that you get on things like the, the PlayStation. They look more like one out of some sort of gun that you just splodge on. Okay, so now where is this HDMI chip? So it's going to be this one here that we're looking at. Let's zoom right in and see what it looks like. Also, before I do that, where's this connector that I've damaged up here? I wonder now, is it even going to be able to boot without that? I have to have a close look at that one as well. Right, so this is it here, and the HDMI ports are all down there, down here. So I think what we need to do is, let's get some flux on that, and let's remove it, and let's see what the pads and stuff look like, because at the moment there's quite a lot of uh, burnt flux and stuff, so it's a bit hard to see what's, uh, what's happening. Then I also need to find out what the missing components are. One thing I haven't checked is the HDMI port. Let's have a look at the ports and see what that looks like. Right, so it was this one here. Right, it looks okay that side. Let's have a look inside it. Right, that looks fine, doesn't it? And that looks fine as well. So I know that the circle here goes to the circle on the chip here, so I don't need to write down which way round it goes. And this was the Lego type connector that came off. So it looks like we've got that pad goes down there. Let's get some different tweezers. Right, so that one looks like it's just going to be ground anyway. They're okay. 
probably get away with, no, that one's gone there, but I might be able to just run a tiny wire to that one there. That's looped round to there, so they could just be bridged. Not sure if that goes off there. So hard to see when there's marking on the board. I think they go to that via there. Uh, what we got here? So this one goes to the via there. This one, where does that one go to? What's this one here? In which case, that could be bridged. Okay. Right, well, actually, that might, might, might be repairable. Let's have a look at the bottom of this one here. What's actually been soldered on? Oh, is it just the bottom there? Right, okay. Uh, yeah, okay. It, it, it could have been a lot worse. It's not good, but it could have been a lot worse. But you know what? Let's not worry about this one yet because maybe it will still work without it. And there's no point in spending hours trying to fix this if, for example, I can't get the fact that it's not displaying on a TV. So I think to begin with, let's try to sort out the TV issue. Right, so let's cover this in flux. And now let's add some heat to it. So looking around, it doesn't look like there's anything that's going to uh, burn too bad around the place. So I should be okay. Well, I've got my airflow 5 out of 8. And my temperature is going to be 480 degrees Celsius. I'm going to add some more flux to that, it's not wanting to come off. And I'm going to up my airflow to uh, 6 out of 8. This board must be very thick. This is not budging at all. There we go. That was very, very hard to get off, that was. Right, luckily all the pads and stuff look... Uh, look pretty good. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to clean all this area with some IPA and then we'll see what we're left with. There's a few kind of uh, burnt bits around the place. Let's give it a good clean. Looks pretty clean. So these are going to be the ones going off to the actual HDMI chip itself. Can you see they then go down to these little filters here and then straight into the chip. So I'm just going to do a quick continuity test just between the pads and this side here just to make that those make sure that those little chips are okay, those little filters. So I've got my meter on continuity. Right, so from here, should be going all the way over to here, which it is. It shouldn't be shorting with there, which is not. Okay, so that's that one, that's good. That's just going to be a ground. I just want to double check that is a ground. Yeah, okay, that's a ground in the middle there. That one there is going to be going to 
this one and not shorten with this one, no, nope. that's fine, fine, not shorten with there, fine, ground, and here, okay, and not shorten with there, and here, excellent, okay, well, they look to be okay, so now I haven't got one of these chips at the moment, but you can buy them, they're going to be on eBay for probably between 10 and 15 pounds. So what I'm going to do is, because I don't want to just buy one if it's not that, I have actually got an Xbox One X, it's out of warranty now because it's older than a year old, so I'm actually going to take the chip out of my one and pop it into Myron's one to see if that then solves the problem. I normally wouldn't do this, I normally would just buy one, but we've got missing components as well and I need to know what those components are and it's no good just saying oh they're a resistor or they're a capacitor I need to know the values of them and I need to know exactly what's missing so either way I'm going to have to take my one apart and take components off to get the reading so that's the reason I'm going to risk my one in the attempt to repair this one if I knew it was just a retimer chip I would never risk my one for that but that coupled with the fact of the missing components it means that I have to do surgery on mine anyway so that's the reason I'm doing something which may seem a stupid thing to do so the next bit that you're going to see in this video is where I have my good working board and Myron's board side by side and I'm going to start comparing the components and just out of curiosity I decided to put the 40 chip back on the board just to see if it would make any difference when it was reflowed on there properly but unfortunately it made no difference whatsoever so I've got my good board out here now and this is the faulty one here and this came apart no problem at all and this thing here is intact it came off really easy on this one just popped off like that so uh, what is interesting is look I didn't notice this when I was taking apart the other one remember it was called Project Scorpio the Xbox One X and there you go you got a scorpion isn't that good Nice little touch that. So let me show you the differences. There's uh, three components that are on here which are not on here. So let me just zoom in and show you them. Right, so these are the ones we're missing. We're missing this little resistor here, which I think is R386. So that could be doing something because it's going from that via and that via to this pin here. And we're also missing R71, which is this one here. And we're also missing this one here. C43, this capacitor. So now let me show you the 40 board. There you go, can you see R386 is missing, R71 and also C43. So to begin with I am going to take those off my good board and I'm going to measure them with my little tester, my little component tester and hopefully it will show me what they are and then I can start off by replacing them and then I think I'm going to take the chip and see if this board starts working or not. All right, let's try and pop this capacitor off. Right, okay, managed to remove it eventually. Now, because this board is uh, so hard to work on, I think with the resistors I'm just going to measure what they are rather than take them off because it should, be, it should be accurate enough. And then what I can do is I can put resistors on the other board I think are the same, and then if they measure differently, then I can take them off. But if they measure the same when they're on the board, then I'm happy to use them because normally you can measure resistors in circuit. 
Right, so I've just got it in these reverse tweezers here. So now let's go to capacitance and let's see if it's going to tell me what it is. I hope this doesn't ping across the room now. Knew that was going to happen. I knew that was going to happen. Now, where did I? Oh, here. Luckily, it's still here. Do you know what? I'm going to just to try to do it without that. all over the place. Come on, give me a reading. Wow, why is this why is it all over the place? I reckon it might be a hundred nanofarad. Try a little bit of blue tack. There you go, 112, wasn't it? Hundred and twelve nanofarad. So I presume that's just gonna be a a hundred nanofarad. Right, okay, and I've already written down what these resistors are, but let me just show you them in circuit. Make sure I don't lose that capacitor. So let's go to ohms. And the first one is the R386. These are much easier to measure. So there we go, that is uh, 9.5 kilo ohms, and the one above it is 1.1 or 1.2 ohms. So that's nearly a direct short, that one. So I have to find out now if I've got these. I think I'm going to start with them to begin with and then uh, let's worry about the chip after that. So I just have to try to struggle to get this back on the board now. Uh, because it's so hard, I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put some solder on the pad, some leaded solder, and I'm going to use some hot air to try and get that back on. Let's try and get a bit of leaded on it. Right, I'm going to find some of these resistors and capacitors now. Right, so you can see there, 100 nanofarad. So let's start off by popping on that capacitor. Just going to add some leaded solder to the pads. Right, now when it comes to capacitors this small, it, uh, there's no markings on them, it doesn't matter which way round this one goes. Right, 
Right, let's heat it up. Right, that's in its home. Now I'm going to pop the resistors in. Now remember I need a 9.5K, well I've got a, a 10K for that one, and a 1.25 ohm, and I've got a 1 ohm for there. So that should be fine. So I'm going to start with the R71. I've just measured this, and this one is coming up as 2 ohms, but that's the closest one I've got, even though it was down as 1 ohms, it's coming up as 2 ohms. But the one I measured on the other board was 1.25 ohms. Again, it doesn't matter which way these go on. Right, that's definitely home so that's good now let's pop the other one on this is the 9.5 kilo ohms and it's coming up as 10 kilo ohms There we go, and that's in its home as well. I've seen it do its little dance. So I'm really happy with how both of them went in. So now what I'm going to do is flood this area with flux again, take off this hopefully faulty retimer chip, and then I'm going to get the one off my board and pop it on there. I'll be honest with you, I'm not looking forward to getting the one off my board because I know it's going to take a serious amount of heat. This should come off easier because there's a lot of leaded solder on this now. Excellent, it comes off so much easier with leaded solder. Now, let's try and get the one off my board. So we're putting plenty of flux around the area. Actually, before I do that, let me just measure the resistors in circuit here, just to see what they're coming up as.
haven't got the chip on but so that's coming up as 10 kilo ohms and that one there is 2.2 ohms I think that's going to be fine Right, here we go, let's have some fun. I'm just going to do bigger circles at the moment just to try to get some heat into the board. Right, so that's uh, leaded solder's melted on the capacitor there. The solder's nearly melted. Excellent. Well, didn't that come off easy? Wow. Okay. I am going to put this board to one side and pop it straight on to here. Where have I gone? Uh, here, okay. And again, we're in the right orientation. So I'm not going to uh, take any solder off or anything like that. Let's just do it, hopefully now, because there's leaded solder on the board still. I'm hoping this will go into place okay. Again, let's add lots of flux. That came off really easy that time. Nothing like the first time I did it. I'm going to make big movements on the board again for a couple of minutes and then just home in on the area. Right, so the leaded solder on the capacitor is melted. And I think that just jumped into place. I've got the shakes. No, maybe not. Yeah, that's in place. That definitely jumped into place there. Excellent. Well, I'm going to let it cool down and then clean it with some IPA and then we'll put it back together and see if we're going to have anything displaying on the Xbox this time. Right, so there you have it. As you can see, that's gone on nicely seats in the middle there and there's no pins that are bridged anywhere yeah well happy with how that went on and you can now see now that it's cleaned up that this is the replacement capacitor here resistor and resistor 
So I don't think the capacitor would have made any difference, but this resistor might have done, because look, whatever is feeding this pin is not feeding this pin if this resistor is not in place. Or this one here, yeah, because it goes from there and these two wires into this pin. So, uh, yeah, I've got a thing they might well be very important. Well, I'm going to get this back together now, and then uh, next time you'll see this, it will be just about to be turned on to the TV. Oh, look, you know, the connector that I messed up is for the USB and the sink. So surely it should still work, even if it doesn't see the sink and the USB. Actually, that's pretty good. Quite pleased about that. Because you can always connect it up with another USB out the back. You can connect up your controller that way. And, uh, yeah, so you're not really, it's still going to be a completely usable product, isn't it? Lucky. Okay, I promise I haven't turned it on. So let's plug in the HDMI cable into the back. I've got power going into it. Let's turn on the TV first. I really don't know if this is going to work or not. I hope it does, and I hope I haven't sacrificed my Xbox One X for nothing. Right, so I should be in HDMI 1, which I am. Here goes. Fingers crossed. Come on, come on, let's see that no signal disappear. Ooh. Mm. It's not that, is it? Oh no. It's not that. It's making those weird noises. I wonder would the hard drive stop stop it from displaying? You think it would display on screen? You know, saying we'd we'll come up with an error. It's making some horrible noises. And the hard drive is in properly into the enclosure. Oh no. Oh, really disappointed. Right, uh I think I think I might just put that retimer chip then back into my Xbox, you know, the, the, the faulty one, the suspected faulty one. Look at that, it's not syncing up there. Hold on. Alright, let's turn it off. Right now, let's turn it on again. Don't like those noises. That's worrying as well, why well, that's not syncing up. Right, let's see if it takes a disc in. Yeah. It's making a vibration noise when it plugs in, but it's not sinking. Oh, invalid format. Invalid format. That's different. And now it's synced up. What on earth is going on? 
Right, I'm quickly going to read up because I've forgotten how to put the Xbox into safe mode, you know, so because it might have been on 4K before and now this TV is not 4K. So I'm just going to read up how to kind of put it back so it will just connect at the lowest possible display. Right, so I've got to turn it off and then I've got to press and hold the Xbox button and the eject button until you hear a beep to turn on the console. You will hear one beep right away and then a second beep 10 seconds later. So let's just get rid of the disc. Now let's turn it off by, uh, I'm going to hold this down. And now I'm going to hold down the eject button and this at the same time. Here we go, 640 by 480. Is it going to come up? Don't even know if that was a proper two beeps or not. Hmm. Doesn't look very happy. Oh, here we go. Excellent. I can't hear any sound though. Well, it's doing something now, isn't it? Do you know what I'm thinking? I'm wondering if it's going to be a hard drive issue. Well, it doesn't seem to want to come off that screen there, does it? But, I mean, it has synced up. It's not doing anything. I'll leave it for another few minutes. See, the thing that I'm not sure about is the hard drive wasn't shipped with the console. Well, it was shipped with the console, but it was out of the console, which is, uh, I'm not sure. I might have to email Myron just to find out the exact backstory of this one. Well, it's definitely hung up there, isn't it? It's not doing anything. Right, let me turn it off again. Uh, I'll just keep fast forwarding through this. I want to. I just want to give it a couple more goes. See, oh, here we go. It's in. It's in. It took a long time. Why is there no sound though? It's incredibly slow. You need the internet for this. It doesn't look like you're connected to the internet. Check your connection and try again. Right, let me. Uh, let me cancel that. Let me go up to. going to go into settings TV and display options let's see if it's going to work on anything else so this is 720p yes it works on that one okay keep that yeah now let's try 1080p and it works on that but why have we not got any sound Well, I'm going to get some headphones, I'm just going to plug them into here, see if I've got any sound coming out of there. Right, we've definitely got sound when it's coming out of here, so I don't know if you're going to be able to hear this or not. Right, so the sound is working. I wonder whether the sound's just been taken off the TV side of things. Uh, let me have a little play around here. Speaker audio, HMI audio off. Right, let's put that to, uh, here we go. Excellent. So it appears to be working. Right, now I'm gonna turn it off, turn it back on and see if it comes back on again.
could it be possible that the hard drive's a little bit iffy and that's why it's making those strange noises? Right, so we're off there now. Let's see if we can turn on with the controller. There we go. And it's straight on. It's straight on now. You'll need the internet for this. Cancel. Well, fantastic. Do you know what we should do before we start worrying about fixing this connection here? I think I'm going to bring it down to my 4K TV and let's see if it can actually connect up on 4K. I think that'd be a good idea. 4K TV details. Okay, your TV setup doesn't support Dolby Vision, but look, everything else is ticks. Good news, you can see there it says update time, so it's connected to the internet like it is all okay. So what I'm gonna do now is try to fix the damage that I caused initially when I took it off. So a classic My Mate Vince video, I did, if I just took a little bit more care, then I'm not gonna, I wouldn't have had to spend possibly the next hour or two trying to fix that connection. But I do believe the connection might well be fixable. All right, so with this, I'm gonna to need to clean up the bottom of this, aren't I? So in this bit here, I had a complete and utter nightmare. So I was running tiny little bits of enameled wire to go to the locations that have been ripped off. And all that actually went okay. And then I used some UV mask and then put it on there and let all that harden. That all went okay. And I was quite pleased with how it was looking. The problem then came is that with the UV mask and the enameled wire that I run, even though the enameled wire was 0.1 millimeters, which is tiny, that's right, 0.1 of a millimeter, it was still way too big, especially with the solder mask, for the connection to fit on, you know, like the Lego connection, it was raised too high, so I couldn't get any of the pads to solder, so I was having a complete and utter nightmare with it, and then unfortunately I had to give up, there was no way I was gonna get that working, I thought about adding heat from underneath, but the board is so thick, you've seen how hard it was trying to remove a chip with the heat on top. So imagine me adding heat underneath. All I would have done is melt the plastic connector for the front plate, which turns on and stuff. And obviously that is much more important than having the USB and sync button working. So what I tried to do is I tried to add a bit of heat from the top just to see if the solder would melt before the connector, but that was never gonna happen. The plastic of the connector melted way before the solder so now the connection is completely and utterly gone and there's no coming back from that right this is what I'm thinking now so we know that this one here that I can't fix is to do with the USB and also the sink now the USB isn't that important because we've got two around the back you could always put a USB hub in anyway but what is important is the sink because it is a bit of an inconvenience having to plug a USB cable in. Still completely playable, but still a bit of an inconvenience. Now if you have a look, this is the sync button here, and basically the middle contact there is just ground, yeah? And then we've got two contacts on the outside. These two are uh, basically in contact with each other. So when we go between ground and either one of them and press the button, it makes the circuit. See? And when I go on to, not the ground, but the one of the contacts, it's coming up on the edge pin here, nowhere else. So what I'm thinking is, if I could just get this soldered on with just one pin, just one pin, then it means that pin there, hold on, so that top pin there, so it's going to have to be the bottom pin here, which is the sink one. So if I could just get one thing soldered on, then the sink would work. And I would be well happy with that because then it's just a USB which is not working. So I think that's what I'm going to try and do. And I think the pin on the top there, it goes through a little via and it looks like it's this one here going down here. Into here. So that's the one I'm going to try and connect up. Right, the connector's completely broken on me now, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run a wire and I'm gonna leave it really, really long. And then I'm thinking it will be able to be put back together because the wire's so long. This is far from ideal, it's a complete and utter bodge job, but I don't know what else to do on it. 
Right, so I've got to be really careful here. So I've soldered the wire onto just before the switch, there's a little resistor there and I've covered it in glue gun and I've soldered the wire onto pin one up here as well. Again, covered it in glue gun. So now I'm gonna put it back together, put new thermal paste on it and uh, see if it's gonna be all okay or not. Right, so I just need to put the top lid back on and you can see if it works, which I don't know if it does or not, but if it does, that wire is tucked out of the way. So I don't think it's going to be prone to breaking in that position. Right, that's it, back together. Let's now connect up to the TV and see if the sync button works. Here we go, I'm so apprehensive to see if this sync button works. So we've got the original controller we connected up, but I've got this controller here which I haven't synced up yet. So just while that's booting up, I now need to go and buy a retimer chip for the Xbox One X. And if you have a look, you can get them here for £9.85. Do you know what? It's not going to work here, is it? Because I connected it up to 4K TV last. Right, okay, let's see if the sync button's working. Here we go. Come on now. Oh, it's not... Ah, oh, disappointed. I thought that was going to work. Oh, look, it's come up there as 720p. Uh, oh, here we go. It's flashing. Yes, it's flashing. It is going to work. It's just because it hadn't turned itself on yet. Right, so turn this one on. And now hold this down. Come on, sync up, sync up, sync up. Yes! Oh, I'm so happy. I'm more happy with that than I am with the actual retimer chip. Oh, thank God for that. So the only thing that's not working is the USB port down here. That's not such a big deal. I'm just going to try that one more time. Ah, oh, lovely. What a relief. So I got there in the end. I've been on this for hours and hours and hours. That connector caused a lot of headache for me. But the main thing is, is that the sync is working and that's what I'm pleased about. USB port, I can live without that's not such a big deal at all but uh, yeah how, how do I feel that this one went well if I'm honest with you it surprised me how hard it was now I know I'm not an expert whatsoever but that board drained away so much heat I would say that was the limit of what my equipment could handle so I'm thinking now if I ever want to do work on maybe the next generation of Xboxes and PlayStations I think my equipment is going to struggle because I was at full air at one stage, well no, I think I was at 7 out of 8 and 480 degrees Celsius and my hand was getting hot, I was holding the wand over it for so long my hand felt like it was burning and the board was still just getting all that heat away so fair play to the board for doing what it's doing very well there must be a lot of ground planes in there which is drawing all that heat away so Myron, if that was your first or second attempt it is a complete and utter nightmare if you try doing that on something like a, uh, I don't know, like a Wii or a Nintendo Switch or something like that, you would have needed much less heat and uh, I think you would have found it a lot easier. So don't let that put you off because I know I'm not a professional, but still I've done quite a few chips now on different boards and I found that really, really hard. So uh, don't be discouraged by that because I'm sure if you try it again and again on something easier to work on, I think you will have success in the future. It hasn't been an ideal fix because I haven't fixed everything but the bottom line is before it wasn't displaying and now it is displaying and the only thing that's not working is the USB port so I think most people would sacrifice a USB port in order to be able to use the uh, 
Xbox One X itself. So massive thumbs up to Myron for sending it over to me. I really do appreciate that. Thanks so much. Hope you enjoyed the video and I hope everybody else enjoyed the video too. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and please subscribe for more China Fix videos. Take care. Bye now.